Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Institute for Justice. In February of this year, IJ launched a case to defend a mother of three who was fined over $100,000 for parking on her own grass in her own yard. I'm here with IJ attorney Ari Bargill. Ari, can you give us a little bit of background on this case? Sure. As you said, Rebecca, we launched this case back in February on behalf of Sandy Martinez, a mother of three who was fined over $100,000 for parking her own cars on her own driveway in such a way that the wheels extended just a little bit onto the grass. And that's illegal in Lantana. And the result was fines of $250 per day that Sandy didn't know were accruing. By the time she found out, she owed over $100,000 to the local government. Couple that with a couple other fines that she had from before for a downed fence in a hurricane and cracks in that very same driveway. And Sandy's in debt to the city of Lantana in an amount of over $165,000. But the government can't lock you into a lifetime of debt and cripple you financially because your driveway is cracked or too narrow. And so IJ is representing Sandy Martinez, challenging the constitutionality of the fines under Florida's excessive fines clause, which protects Floridians from excessive fines just like these. So there's news in the case. Can you tell us what just happened and what it means? Absolutely. So last week, uh, we were in court on the city's motion to dismiss the case. And essentially what that means is that the city is asking the court to get rid of our case based on our complaint alone, saying, look, Your Honor, even if everything that they've said in their complaint is correct, they still can't win on the merits. They've got no legal basis for relief. And of course, we disagreed and we went in court on, on Monday of last week to argue. And the judge agreed with us and said at this stage, there's, there's no reason to get rid of this case, and the case is going to move forward uh, to summary judgment or trial, where the parties are going to be able to shepherd all the evidence that they need and make their best legal arguments in front of the judge. And that's what, what we like to think of as getting past round one of, of, a, of uh, in, in a case, uh, in, in a constitutional case. We, we always have to fight against motions to dismiss. In this case, it was no different. We're glad to have that in the rearview mirror, and now we get to really move forward and get this case up on the merits. So what's next for Sandy and really for people like her elsewhere? So for Sandy, the, the, the next steps are pretty straightforward. She's got the backing of the Institute for Justice, and so we're going to do what IJ lawyers do. We're going to take some depositions from city officials. We're going to seek documents. We're going to ask them questions, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty on these claims so that we can prove them up when we go back in front of the judge in a few months. For other Floridians, um, you know, the goal is that by winning for Sandy, we'll win for everybody. And if we get a ruling that strikes down these fines as unconstitutional because they're grossly disproportionate to the offense for which they were assessed, that'll help everybody in Florida. And, and that's really what this case is about. Sure, we want to win for Sandy, and we, we intend to do that. But if we're successful, it'll be meaningful for, for everybody in Florida, not just Sandy. Well, let's hope for everyone in Florida and for Sandy that we're successful. Is there anything else that viewers should know about this case and what it means? Yeah, I, I think that this is part of just a broader campaign by the Institute for Justice to push back against excessive fines at the city and local level. Um, you know, as, as happened to Sandy and as happens to so many people throughout the country, daily fines can really easily snowball into tens of thousands of dollars in debt. And when that happens, those fines aren't just financially crippling, they're unconstitutional. In the United States, no financial punishment can be so severe that it financially ruins a wrongdoer, especially for really small violations like the one that Sandy is facing in this case. And so the Institute for Justice is fighting on behalf of folks like Sandy who are facing severe financial harm and massive, massive mountains in debt for really trivial violations. The government doesn't have the power to do this to people, and the Institute for Justice is going to make sure that courts say so. Well, I'm sure that Institute for Justice followers will be watching closely to see what happens. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain this to us today. My pleasure.